Hey, everybody. I hope you're enjoying your Tuesday today. Um, I haven't done a video in a while. And last night, I could not sleep. And I believe that it was because I needed to share something with you. And I've just been reluctant to share because a lot of you who know me personally know I'm a private person. I don't let a lot of people too close. Um, and I'm the type of person that I always, you know, put on the strong look and I'm always smiling and I'm always like, everything's okay. I got it all together. Don't worry about me. I'm the one that my friends call me when they need to be uplifted. I'm the one that um, is supposed to have everything together. And the truth is, I don't. And so last night, I was just struggling with sharing this today um, because I didn't want everyone to know that I'm not that person that has everything together, that I do fall sometimes, like not, not into sin, I just fall in my mental state. Like sometimes I am down and sometimes things go wrong and sometimes I fail and because I'm the one that always seems to have it together, I don't let anybody know. I keep it to myself. I keep it to myself when I'm feeling down. I keep it to myself when I feel that I failed. I keep it to myself when I feel like I'm not good enough. I just always keep it to myself. And it's difficult to get yourself out of that dark space if you stay there too long um, because nobody knows. So how can anybody help you if nobody knows? And um, earlier this morning, I was doing a prayer with my good friend, Evangelist Philip Rivera. And um, it's funny because I, it was confirmation to me. Um, he was talking about helping people. And he was talking about how Jesus will send someone to you to uplift you and help you right when you need it. And then he said, what are you doing to help those around you and so that's what I wanted to talk about today because he specifically there's been two times in my life where I was so so much in a dark place and nobody knew like I was so depressed like I just could not uplift myself I couldn't encourage myself I couldn't get out of it and and I was stuck and I remember like feeling like losing hope and I didn't even want to pray and I didn't want to see anybody. I didn't want to talk to anybody. Like it was in a dark, dark place. And it's happened twice in the five years that I've known um, Evangelist Philip. And twice he's caught me in those places and he's reached out. And it only takes a message. It only it doesn't take much. It just takes like, hey, um, God still cares about you. So snap out of it shake yourself off dust yourself off yes things go wrong yes the pandemic sucks yes this whole um you know racism um uprising that we see it sucks like there's a lot of injustices you might have lost your job because of this pandemic um you might have lost faith you might have lost hope um and i'm here today to remind you that God is still with you and God is still there. So pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and try it again. So I was reading Luke 5, and I'm not going to read the whole thing. I was reading Luke 5 because that's the um, part where Jesus meets Simon. So this is before Simon becomes Peter. And so Jesus... Let me get to it. It's so good. It's so juicy, right? Because I was literally reading it in tears because I felt like this is me. And so if this is me and I'm and he wants me to share this with you, then that means that somebody out there um, 
might be in that spot too. So let me just get to Luke 5. And I just went 1 through 7. And like I said, I'm not going to read the whole thing because I just want to do a quick quick video. I don't want to be here too long. Um, I know y'all got things to do and I do too. Okay. So if you get a chance to read Luke 5, it's so good. Because my Jesus is so good. He's so like right on time. And so this is where Simon, I might say Simon and I say Peter, but it's the same person. Simon, before Jesus changed his name, was Simon and then now he's Peter. So anyway, um, so Jesus was preaching, right, at this um, lake called Gennesaret. And I looked up the meaning of Gennesaret because I know that these names in the Bible always mean something. And it means fertility. All right, so just keep that in the, in, in, in the back of your mind. So here's Jesus preaching at like the shore of this lake. And he notices that there's these two ships, these two boats, and they're docked. And he sees, you know, some men there and they're just washing their nets. So after Jesus notices them, he goes over there and he asks Simon, can you push your ship out a little bit so I can preach on it? And Simon says, sure. So he pushed it out just a little bit. And Jesus went on top of the, of the ship and finished preaching to the people. So he used the boat, the ship that belonged to Simon. And so when they were done, Jesus says, now let's go out and let's go fish. So let me just go back to where Simon's mental state was at this time. That's what I want to focus on because this is like a place that I recently found myself in. I recently found myself in this place where I was just ready. I was close to giving up. I was just so overwhelmed with everything that was happening. I was, like I said, I was in a dark place mental state where I was down on myself like I didn't it's like I forgot who I was and so Peter prior to this had fished all night right all night so that means that he was in need of a catch he was in need when you're out working all night like if you're an uber driver and you're driving all night that means you got bills that means you got people that are depending on you. So you need to make some money that night. If you're a bartender, if you're a server, and you work all night, that means you're in desperate need of a catch. You need to make ends meet. So you need, you're ready to do whatever you need to do to pay what you need to pay. And so Peter was out there fishing all night, and he didn't catch not one fish. Now, this was his business. He knew that, that during the night, in, like in the evening and early morning, that's the time to catch. That's when the fish come up. That's when the, the water is the coolest and the fish come up. When the water is hot, they stay at the bottom. So he knew this, and so he's fishing, and he's trying to get a catch because he's got people depending on him, and he's got bills, and he's feeling the stress, and he says, I'm going to stay out there all night if I have to, but I need to make some money. And he didn't catch not one fish. And so I started to think like this was me, where you like investing so much time, you're investing so much energy, you're investing so much resources, you just like gung ho, you're believing in yourself, you're, you're, you know, you invested all your money into the ship, and you invested your money into your brother's ship, and you're out here and you're fishing because you just know that you're going to get a catch and you don't even catch not one fish. Right? Have you ever felt like you didn't get a return on your investment? Like you've poured so much of yourself into this thing, into this ministry, into this marriage, into this business, and you haven't received a return. Like you just keep pouring and pouring and pouring and nothing, you, you get nothing in return. And so you feel like just like such a failure. Right. And I think this was his mental state 
where at one point it was successful. At one point he was catching and he, and he could, you know, fish all night and get what he needed to get for that day and eat and feed his family and, you know, but now he's coming up empty and he must have felt so frustrated. Like, what did I do wrong? Like, maybe I need to check my nets. And so here he is when Jesus notices him, he's outside of his ship and he's washing his nets. And so he's probably going through each one of his nets and he's saying, no, there must be a hole here. How could it be that I didn't catch not one fish? I was out here all night. Like I invested all this time and all this energy and all these resources. I have to get a return. What am I doing wrong? And so he's going through his nets, making sure they're tight, making sure they're not ripped, washing them. And he might have felt like, how much more am I gonna invest? I'm, you know, how much more am I gonna am I gonna come up empty? How many more times am I gonna feel like the failure? And and you know, I got people waiting on me, I got people depending on me, and you know. He's thinking like, what do I need to do to get a return? And so he feels like maybe it's time to give up. But then Jesus showed up right when he was thinking, maybe if I should just move on to something else, maybe this isn't for me anymore. You know, maybe I don't need to be wasting my time on this thing anymore. Maybe I need to move to something else because I just fished all night and I didn't catch not one fish. Like something's not right. What went wrong? And so the fact that he was going through his nets and reassuring himself that there was no hole, there was no rip, to me meant he wasn't 100% ready to give up. Like he was preparing to go fishing the next day. Like, have you ever felt like I've invested, I'm too far in to walk away now. Like I've invested already six years into this marriage. I'm not gonna walk away now. Like I've invested so much that I'm not willing to walk away yet. And so I feel like that's where he was. And so he's preparing for tomorrow and Jesus shows up. And he allows Jesus to use the ship, you know, he's like, take it. I'm so mad that I, I hadn't caught any fish that that ship's no good to me right now. Take it a bird, do whatever you want with it, take it. And so Jesus, you know, sits, sits there and finishes preaching. And then after he's done preaching, he says, try it again. Let's go out into the deep. Let's go fishing. And there must have been, I mean, for me, maybe you're divorcee or maybe you know you you foreclose on a home or maybe you've gone through a, like a bad experience where you don't want to go through that again you don't want to put yourself in that situation again and he's saying come on let's do this let's go out there again like i was just there i just did that i've been there i've done that and it didn't work for me and so now jesus is saying come on let's go let's do it again and like Simon might have, I, I know I have, I make excuses and I say, I don't want to go there again because I'm afraid of failing again. Like, I don't like to fail. I don't. It, 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 it's something that I just don't, I didn't receive well, right? When, when, when I failed at something that I was so passionate about that I just knew this is what God wanted me to do when I used to be good at it and now I'm failing at it and what is happening, right? I don't want to do that anymore. Like I want to do something that I'm good at. I want to do something that I, that I'm productive at. And so Jesus says, let's go, let's go out there again. And so something beautiful happens where Simon says, nevertheless, at thy word. So Simon says, look, we can go out there, but I'm going to tell you right now, I've been fishing all night and I didn't catch not one fish. But because you say so, Jesus, let's go. So he says, nevertheless, at thy word. And I think in that moment was when faith was restored, right? Because 
Simon felt like a failure. Simon was upset. Simon's thinking in the back of his mind, like, what are we going to eat? How am I going to feed my family? You know, what am I going to do? How am I going to explain to my wife that I fished all night and I didn't catch one fish? And so Jesus says, come on, let's try it again. He says, all right, I'll take your word. And so because Jesus said, let's go out, Simon disregarded the fact that he, he might have been tired. He might have been hungry. He said, okay, at thy word. And that to me was so precious. Like it just sat in my spirit, right? Because how many times do you just need a word, a word from somebody? Like it doesn't have to be God the way he spoke to Abraham with the burning bush. Like it could be a text that you receive from somebody and say, hey, I'm thinking about you. Hey, how are you doing? Hey, meet me in prayer. You know, a bunch of us are meeting in prayer at 5 a.m. and we're fasting and we're praying. And we need that little push to just restore faith again. Because once you get started again, all you need is that push to go out into the deep one more time. And then you meet Jesus there, right? So something so beautiful happened. He says that, nevertheless, at thy word, faith was restored. So Jesus declared a word and Simon received it. Fine, let's go. And what happened? He received so many fish that the nets broke. The nets that he just finished reassuring were tight, broke. He received so many fish that the boat started to sink. He called his brother and said, hey, there's fish over here, get over here. He brings his ship and his ship starts to sink because of how many fish they caught in the boat. Because of one word. Won't he do it? <laughs> yes, he will. So, yes, you might have come up short in your investment. You might have invested so much emotion. You might have invested so much money. You might have invested so much time. But Jesus is saying, this time, try it with me. This time, use my word. So yeah, maybe you're divorced and that marriage didn't work. But this time, God wants you to try it with Jesus. Let Jesus guide you into the deep. Jesus, this time Jesus went with Simon. That was the difference. Because yeah, Simon was out and Simon failed and he was with his brothers. And yeah, he thought he knew what he was doing because he had a business fishing. But this time Jesus went with him. And that was what made the difference. He let Jesus guide him into the deep and he used his word. He allowed Jesus to take the lead. So yes, here we are in this pandemic and you might be out of work. Your kids are out of school. You know, we have fear and riots and protests and some peaceful and some not and businesses are at stake and there's a lot of stress but i want you to know that god is still there and he wants you to try it again with him follow him and let him guide you and use his word and don't be afraid to try it again so I love you with God's love. I hope that this helps you today. Um, and I want you to know that if you ever need anybody to talk to or anybody to pray for you, you can always message me. I'm here for you. If you need to talk, I'm here for you. And just believe that God has a plan for your life. Don't give up. It's going to get better. I promise you it's going to get better. So have a rest, the, have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you next time. Love you and stay safe. Bye-bye.